Hello, hello, welcome to Rachel Paints Poorly. My name is Rachel and I paint poorly. Today, we are going to be making this cloak for use on those chillier reenactment days and nights. This particular pattern doesn't have an actual pattern. It's more like guidelines, though it does have this little drawing to accompany the instructions. More interesting to me than the picture is this list of needs five yards of heavyweight wool, that's gonna add up real quick. Quality wool isn't cheap, and you can't find it at the big chain stores like Joanne or Hobby Lobby. Also, we're months out from reenactment events spinning back up for the season, so we are going to have to use the interwebs. Luckily, <clears throat> Luckily, fabric samples are a thing, so I have put in my requests to B. Black & Sons here in the good old US of A, and A.W. Hainsworth over in our good friends the UK of Earth. I picked a variety of colors. The pattern instructions say any color, blue and scarlet, were the most popular, but obviously they mean any color that was available at the time. I did include blue and darker reds in my sample requests. I also tossed in green and purple, just in case I happen to end up liking them more. One thing I should mention is this whole idea of historical accuracy. The point has been made many times by many people much smarter and more talented than me that, try as we might, we can never achieve true historical accuracy because we just don't inhabit the same world as the people that we're imitating. And that's okay. Once we recognize our limitations, we can determine how close to the mark we are willing and able to attain based on time, skill, access to material, and most importantly, money. For example, I'm committing to buying a higher quality wool and hand sewing the exposed outer seams, but I will be machine sewing the concealed interior seams. Also, and this might sound bad, but I want my cloak to match my dresses. I know that given the time frame, location, and socioeconomic status of the people we interpret as reenactors, that probably wouldn't have been a viable consideration, but I just haven't been able to get over that hump yet. Downvote. Unsubscribe. I see you and your opinion has been heard. Anyway, for those of you who haven't clicked off the video, we will meet again once the fabric samples have arrived. So it's been about three weeks. During this time, I managed to go online to find a serviceable pewter cloak clasp and ended up splurging on an antique sterling silver clasp from France. That arrived January 9th, and with it came the additional stipulation that the fabric not only match my existing dresses, but that it also match my tray snaz fastener. The A.W. Hainsworth samples never showed. I actually requested them a day or two before the B. Black & Sons. Because they were arriving from England, I figured they would take longer. However, I then received the cloak clasp from France and they still hadn't arrived, so I'm going to assume that they were lost at sea. That's perfectly fine though, because of the two I received from B. Black & Sons, I am really liking the purple wool coating. It has a softer feel to it than the green, which is a bit more coarse, and the color works really well with my two primary reenacting dresses. What's more, it looks hella good with my antique cloak fastener, so... I'm going to order five yards of the purple wool coating, plus two yards of hair canvas, while I will try to find a matching silk thread at Joanne. The lining is a bit more tricky. Technically, the cloak doesn't have to have one, but if one chooses to put it in, the pattern recommends silk. Now, it just so happens that I have a decent amount of silk in my fabric hoard, uncut no less. However, I am not sure that it is five yards worth. I also have a complementary shade in linen, but again, five yards 
worth. I could always line the hood and the fronts of the cloak with the silk and then use linen for the back two panels. Not the worst idea I've ever had. And so without further ado, let's get started, shall we? 